How you doing, YouTube? Matt, Master Beer Reviews, back with yet another review of a beer I'm going to butcher a lot of words, because that's what I do. This is Beer Darbiste, I believe it is, and it is from Brasserie de Blage, Blage, Blages. I have no idea. I'm butchering the shit out of that. That's what I do. This is a uh, ale brewed with fig juice. I love figs. Yeah. Um, I went to a local kind of a bottle shop. Um... It's not too far away from me. It's about 20 minutes away from me, and it's kind of like a distributor, like a big distributor, but also a bottle shop, and they usually have Cantillon on uh, in the shelf. That's right, Pennsylvania. Cantillon is a shelfie in Pennsylvania, for those that didn't know. And uh, I was there, and I was just kind of looking at different stuff, and this one kind of caught my eye. So, yeah, let's get down with it. All uh, right, let's see. Beer Darbiste, um, ale brewed with fig juice. Brasserie de B Blue Blage B L A U G L E S B Blagi Bug Blagis. I have no idea. I'm not gonna fucking keep saying it. Beer artisanal Belge non filter re 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 fermentation in the bottle. Traditional base malt and a bunch of other words I can't. It's in you know French Belgian um, kind of. Wording and whatnot. 5.8% alcohol by volume. And on the back here, in super small lettering, at a point where I'm not going to be able to read it, it says uh, Derbiste, a drier, more flavorful variant of a traditional Belgian wit or blanche, is a saison made with wheat and fermented with fig juice. It comes from an old family recipe uh, and is named from John Darby, a temperance preacher whose parishioners were oddly moved by a soft drink they claimed was just fig juice. At 5.3%, it's a great summer beer, spritzy but full of character. Uh, Brasserie de Blagis is a truly a family operation founded in 18, 1988, it looks like. The brewery began with a husband and wife uh, who pride themselves on brewing small batches by hand in the garage of, three, of their 300-year-old farmhouse. Um, let's see, no less. Ba, 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 ba. In keeping with the traditional brewing methods, all their beers are unfiltered and re-fermented in the bottle. There's no date on this, so I was really curious about the date. Couldn't find anything. It might be on the cork. Let me see what it wants. So I'll crack, crack into this sucker. Oh, that cage is broken. So good thing that this didn't come flying out on its own. Is there a date on the cork? No, there is not. Hmm. 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 Cork smells a little TCA. So almost, hopefully that is not the case. But yeah, 5.3% Belgian fig juice sugar. You're speaking of the right dude right now. If this comes off well, I will be happy. So what do we have there? Yeah, I mean, you're looking for something. They talked about being a Belgian wit base uh, with, I assume, Saison yeast. A little bit darker. It's almost in that beer de garde kind of color, but that could also be your Saison base kind of interacting with that fig juice. It's 5.3% and there's fig juice in it. So it, with it being re-fermented in the bottle, I have a hard time thinking that the ABV didn't change, but we'll see what's what. Um, pinky finger. Um... Yeah, just off white khaki colored head and just murkiness. It looks like iced tea, to be perfectly honest with you. So, yeah, let's get a nose on her. Yeah, soft, very soft, gentle figs. A little bit of soft, non negative green apple. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, it smells more. It smells less Saison and more like a, a, a very old kind of Belgian table beer. I've had a couple um, Belgian table beers in your 4 or 5% range that I've had after, you know, 10, 15 years that were quite nice beers. And they just have this soft caramel character. That has this going for a little bit, but instead of that caramel, it's a little bit figgy. Uh, which kind of makes sense. You get that fig datey thing a lot of times with aged uh, malts. And then there's just a soft... Like I said, there's a soft apple. Now there's a little bit of funk in there, a little bit of skunky green funk in there, like almost like light struck hops. It's adding to the beer. Yeah, it smells nice. Very gentle, very light, very delicate. Well, at the same time, um, it smells... <sighs> nah, the word isn't rich. I'm not looking for rich. It's It, it smells like it's going to have a, a fullness to it. Right. Let's dive in. Cheers. That's nice. They talked about it being a summer beer. It kind of makes sense. It comes off almost like a lemon. It's a lemon. 
a lot of lemon, that little bit of fig in there, and a subtle funk, subtle funk, almost like a lager funk elevated, and a little bit of those skunky hops. It all kind of works together. It's quite nice and tasty, but it comes off more like a soda, like a seltzer, like a, a lemon seltzer, like almost like a LaCroix kind of thing. Mmm. This is summer. I mean, it's two days till um, Christmas. So we're just about as far away from summer as you could possibly be. Um, but this definitely speaks of summer. It's bright. It's refreshing. Like I said, it comes off as more of La Croix, kind of lemon seltzer water with a little bit of fig going on. Almost like if you got a lemon, lemon La Croix and put a little bit of fig in there. I like it. I think it's fun. It's tasty. It's drinkable. It lacks a little bit of pizzazz for me. Um, it lacks a little bit of a kind of... It needs something to tie it all together. It's a little bit kind of disjointed, but in general, I think it's a really well done, really tasty beer. I think this has some time on it, too. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a couple years old. But I like it. Absolute world-class dinner beer. This is something that you definitely serve with a meal because it's not going to overpower much but it's going to add a little bit like you know if you want a little chicken something like that it's going to add that little tart lemon uh, factor to it if you don't like overly lemon your chicken you should always lemon your chicken by the way and uh and uh yeah it, it just it, it, it needs an accompaniment with it and that's not a bad thing um it, it it's it's a, fo a void filler uh to open this in a share or something like that I'd probably get lost in the shuffle or be one of the best palate cleansers you'll ever have. And I don't want to dismiss it. I don't want to kind of put it down on that level of, oh, it's just a dinner beer or a palate cleanser. But it's kind of where it lands for me. But at the same time, I think it's damn tasty. So that's just me. So let's talk about it. It's one of the better Belgian beers I've had as of late. <sighs> yeah, on the outside looking at it, I like it. I think it's tasty. It's fun. It was a really fun buy for me. At 12 bucks. I'm not going to fucking bitch and moan at it. But um, it just, it, it lacks, like I said, something to kind of bring it all together. Bagged availability, like I said, 12 bucks, picked it up off the shelf and leave you with, if you like what, will you like this beer? If you like, I don't even want to say, if, maybe French Saison, more specifically, French Beer de Garde. It gets close in that realm, but you like a little bit of lemon with your beer. It comes off very lemon-like, so if those are things that kind of turn you on flavor-wise, then this would probably do you proper. There you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive if you want to check me out, check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully enjoying a nice little uh, Belgian jammer right now. Hope to see you next time. Cheers.